Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and today we're going to be doing an integration services tutorial. We're going to be looking at the import and export wizard, which is an ETL process without the T. So ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. The import and export wizards allows us to extract and load, um, but we can't do any transformations. So what are we going to be looking at today? We're going to be looking at how to import and export data. The scenarios we want to go through are we want to import a list of new customers into our database and then we're going to move on to exporting a list of books to a flat file or a CSV. So let's have a look at the import and export wizard. Now this is used for simple data movement so no transformations needed. So if we just want to get data from one place to another, from a flat file to our database or from an Excel file to our database or the other way around, the import and export wizard can do that job for us. We do have the option to save the packages to be reused or we can edit them and add on transformations if we need them in the future using SQL Server data tools. The import and export wizards allows us to create the destination objects so if we want to create new tables within our database or if we're doing exports and we want to create those files we can do that within the package. We also have the option to write a query to transfer data so we may be exporting data from a table or multiple tables and we don't want all of that data to be transferred. We may want to add some filtering to that data so we can write a query to give us the option to do that. We can perform basic data transformations which will become apparent when we get into the example. Let's jump over to SQL Server Management Studio now and we'll go, we'll go through some examples on how to use the import and export wizard. Now I know what you're thinking, this is not SQL Server Management Studio, and you're right, this is Microsoft Excel. I just wanted to show you the, the first look at the data we're going to be importing. So we have this Excel spreadsheet, and what we want to do is put this data into our database. Now we won't, don't want to do, have to do any manual work, we want to use a tool to do that for us. And that's where the import and export wizard is extremely beneficial. So this is just a first look at the Excel spreadsheet that we're going to be importing into our database just so you can get a look at that. Now we will be going over to SQL and have a look at how to do it. So we're in SQL and as usual in these examples we're going to be using the bookshop. So we know we've got that data in our Excel file and we want to bring that into our database. So what we're going to do is right click on our database scroll down to tasks, open that up and then we're going to go down to the import data option and that will open up the SQL Server import and export wizard. This just gives a, uh, this page just gives a bit of detail about the wizard and we've got the option to tick the box at the bottom to not show this again. So we're going to click on next here and it's going to give us our data source. So it's going to say to us choose your data source, where is the data coming from that you want to import. So in this case we're going to choose our data source as we can see we've got various data sources we can choose from but we're going to be working with Microsoft Excel. Now what it does then it automatically recognizes that we've put in Excel and asks us for our file path location. So I'm just going to click on browse in this case it's just on our desktop. So we've got our Excel file path there, it's picked up our Excel version and we've got a little ticks box here to say first row has column names. In this case it does, so it doesn't want to be bringing in that data to put into a table, it's actually going to pick that up as the column names for you. So if I click on next we're now going to move on to our destination and it's got that already pre-filled in for us because we selected the import option it knows we are going to be bringing data into that database if not we'd have to set up the destination uh, type um, so in this case we're going to be using SQL Server native client 
our server name, so the instance name that we're going to be importing to. We've got the option to choose our authentication method as well. In this case, I'm just going to use the default Windows authentication, but we could set it to SQL Server if we wanted to. It's also recognized our database. If we wanted to change that, we have our list of databases here. So there we've set our data source and our destination, and we're going to click on Next again. Now we've got the two options here. We can copy data from one or more tables or views. So we can use tables or views within this wizard. Or we can also write a query to specify the data to transfer. So if I clicked on the option to write a query and click next, it would ask me for a SQL statement. We're going to be moving on to that in the second example. In this case, we're going to be copying data from a table or view. Uh, in fact, we're going to be copying data from an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to click on Next now, and there we've got the sheet name picked up, so Sheet 1. And what it's going to do here, it's saying that the destination table name is going to be Sheet 1. Now if we click there, we have the option of choosing every table within our database to select that to go into. In this case, I want to actually create a new table. Now, the wizard's are automatically doing that for us, but it's giving us the default name as sheet one, which we don't want. So we can simply click here, remove that out, and give our new name as customers new. Okay, so that's going to say to the import and export wizard that we want to create a new table in fact I'm not going to call it customers new because I believe that already exists customers underscore Excel and then we've got the option to edit the mappings and this is what I talked about where we have the option for basic transformations now when we bring in text data from Excel the data types don't work great between Excel and SQL Server, even though they're both Microsoft products, the data types don't always match. So it always defaults to a size of 255. And if I wanted to change the data type, I have a drop down list here to change that. And I can also change the size. Bear in mind, when you do change the size when you are importing data, you may get a little warning just to say that truncation errors can occur because the wizard will think that this data size in Excel is 255 characters. So if I was to shorten that to 50, then it might give me, well, it will give me a warning that say, to say that truncation can occur. You may cut off some of that data. So if you had some text in there that was 100 characters long, you only want to bring in the first 50 characters. So you've lost the other 50 characters that would have been within that column. We also have the option here to create destination table at the top. We can edit the SQL on that, so we could change the name in here, and we could change different things, like we could set a primary key. Um, we could change the columns to, the, to be nullable or not nullable. Um, for this example, though, we're not going to change anything in here. I just wanted to show you that we can do that. Uh, we also have the option of a tick box to drop and recreate destination table. In this case, it doesn't exist, so we don't need to do that. And then we've also got the option to enable identity insert. In this case, we're not going to be using that. So I'm happy with those mappings at the moment. We've got our table name, and then we can click on preview to see what this, is going, this data is going to look like within our database. So we can see We've got our list of customers, all the columns that we needed, that looks good. So if we now click on next, we're going to get the option to save and run the package. So do we want to run the package immediately or do we just want to save it for future use? So if we save the package, it would make it reusable. We could run it again in the future. Or we also have the option to edit the package. We may want to add transformations in the future. And we could do that within SQL Server Data Tools. We could open up the package in there and add in the necessary transformation steps. In this case, we're not going to be saving the package. Mainly what I use this wizard for is sort of one-off uh, one load. So I don't need to do anything with the data itself. I just need to bring that into the database. Um, a, a customer may send me just some data and say, can you import this? 
uh, just as a one-off. Um, if it was happening regular, I'd save the package so I could re-execute it and not go th through having to create a new one all the time. So we're just going to click the next button here. And then we're going to get a summary page of what it's going to do. So we can see on here we've got our source location, source provider, destination location, destination provider. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be copying rows from our Excel sheet to this new table. The new target table will be created. We're not saving the package and we want to run it immediately. So if I click on finish now, we will get this this page come up that will run the execution now if you are bringing in a large amount of data it could take a long time um, to run this page but as long as you're going through the steps and you're getting those green ticks and we can see here we've also got a message to say 10 rows transferred uh, I think off the top of the he my head that is how many I was expecting so that looks good to me um, we've also got the option to open up a report here so these are the steps that that went through. So we've got some warnings, but we're not going to look at those at the moment. And we can see different details within that report. If we had an error, we may wish to open that up and look at it in more detail. And now I'm just going to click close. And then I'm going to open up my tables. I'm just going to refresh the database so I can see the new table that's going to be created and here I've got customers Excel so if I just run a select statement from that table now IntelliSense hasn't been refreshed so it won't pick up that table yet so I've got my 10 rows in there if I go back onto my Excel sheet I can see I've got my 10 rows in there as well so that has worked successfully so that's just a quick demonstration guys of how to import data into a database we're now going to be moving on to how to export data so we're going to go back over to SQL and again we're just going to right click on the database name we're going to go down to tasks and we want to export data again it's going to be exactly the same wizard so we're going to click next on the first page and now we've got our data source automatically set for us because we've clicked on the database itself and said that we're going to be exporting data from this database it's already pre-filled in for us and again that all looks collect correct we've got our data source the server name and our database name and our authentication method of Windows so I'm going to go next now what we want to do is we're going to be creating a flat file so I'm going to change the destination type and I'm going to scroll up to flat file destination and it's going to be asking me where do you want to put that so if I click on browse and enter my name again I'm just going to write it to the book uh, to the desktop as books we can see that's going to create that for us it's asking for our format in this case delimited so we just want a comma separated list and we know the column names are going to be in the first data row that's automatically ticked for us so if I click on next and in this case we're not going to be just copying data we're going to be writing a specific query to transfer the data so we're going to imagine we've got a customer come in and he wants to know which books he's purchased and let's add a, let's add a date function as well let's say how long ago he purchased those books so if I click on write a query to specify the data to transfer because we are going to be wanting to filter data in our tables and we're also going to be wanting to retrieve data from multiple tables as well. Now when I click next it's going to open up my SQL statement window. With this we can't actually run the statement against the database itself. So what I would suggest doing is actually writing the query within your database window and then and just testing that it works and then simply copying and pasting it into here. We can pass the query to make sure our syntax is correct. So if I just put something like that in there and clicked on pass, we'd get an error to say, I, I don't know what this is which is good so we're going to just take that out so I'm just going to click in the background now and what this customer wants is his order date his title the barcode of the book 
and how long ago he actually bought that book. So we've got a few joins in here as well. Um, so if we just start off by looking at our customers table. So in this case, we're going to be looking at this for Paul Thompson, customer ID 2. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to select the customer ID at the moment. Um, so what we need to do is just join that table to our orders table on our customer ID equals our order customer ID. Orders table doesn't give us much, it's just a summary of the order. Um, now to retrieve the books we need to go into the order details table so we're going to join that to our order details table and that will be on our order ID equals our order details order ID and then we need to look at our books um, in this case it's stored as PID not sure why I did that um, but I did so there we go uh, and that's OD PID to our, I think I was originally calling the table products and then we're going to say where our customer ID equals two and then we're going to add in our columns in here so from the books table we want to retrieve title and we want to retrieve barcode not sure why he wants to know that but we're just using this as an example and we're going to do a date diff calculation as well we want to work out how many days ago he actually placed these orders so we're going to do a date diff day on order date and on current timestamp so current timestamp will just generate the time it is currently now we don't need to return customer ID we're just going to change that to order date as well he doesn't really need to know what his customer ID is okay um, we're just going to alias this calculated column as uh, days since purchase okay so if I run that query now we've got what we wanted we've got the order date we've got the title we've got the barcode and we've got the days since purchase okay now let's just copy that query so we know that query runs successfully and we'll paste it into our SQL statement window on the wizard we'll just pass that just to make sure it runs correct and we can see there we've got a message to say this is a valid SQL statement now remember passing a query might not it doesn't tell you whether you're going to return data it just tells you whether your syntax is correct so that's again important why it is to test the actual query you're going to be running first of all um, so now we're going to click on next so our source query is a query and we've got our row delimiters um, of just the next row and our col column delimiters of a comma in this case we could click on edit mappings here and we can see how it's going to look as we can see here we've got the option clicked to create the destination file which is going to be placed on the desktop called books um, we've got our columns in here and it's going to write to the same names we could change these names if we wanted to uh, in this case we're not going to be doing that um, so I'm just going to click OK there and click on preview and this is what our file is going to be looking like again that looks good we're going to click on next we're going to run this package immediately we don't need to save this we, it's not something we're going to be running regularly it's just going to be a one-off so again I'm just going to click next on this page and we've got our summary page here so the location our source is going to be our database we've got a query that we're going to be running and the package is going to create a new flat file for us called books it's going to be saved on the desktop we don't want to save it but we do want to run it immediately and I'm just going to click finish and again we've got a success message there it's run through the steps it needs to process and it has been successful let's close that down and go and have a look at the file on our desktop so I've moved over to the desktop now guys I'm just going to click on books open that up and as we can see 
that's exactly correct as to what we were expecting. It's just a comma separated list of values and we can see there we have got the correct data what we was expecting. So I hope you've enjoyed those examples guys. Uh, we will be looking at more ETL movements in the future so I just wanted to recap what the import and export wizard can be used for so it's just simple data movements no transformations needed like we've gone through we can perform basic data transformations and that's fine we can save the package and we have got the option to create the destination tables or files and we've also got the option to write a query to transfer that data I hope you've really enjoyed those that, those examples we've gone through today guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so you're made aware of when I do upload videos. Check out the other videos on the channel as well. There's a lot of interesting content on there and I am updating, uploading videos regularly. Thanks for watching.